given the current state of Canada, I've done a lot of shows on COVID-19 related topics lately, but recently a viewer asked me about the Special Investigations Unit in Ontario. I thought it'd be a good opportunity to get back to something a little bit more general and criminal related and take a short break from the heavy COVID-19 related episodes. Hello, my name is Nicholas Wansbutter. I'm a criminal defense lawyer in Stratford, Ontario, Canada, and welcome to Don't Talk TV. So as I indicated, a, a viewer sent me an email, and thank you very much for the email, asking whether I'd consider doing a show on the topic of the Special Investigations Unit and what's the situation with them. So I, I want to give a little bit of an overview of what exactly that unit is. The and Special uh, Investigations Unit is a unit in Ontario that's touted as a civilian oversight for law enforcement. They're the ones who investigate when there's a fatality or a serious injury as a result of police action. Just taking a look at their website, say that's exactly what they say here. The SIU is a civilian law enforcement agency that has jurisdiction over municipal, regional, and provincial police officers, as well as special constables employed by a number of forces. The SIU director may cause a criminal investigation to be conducted into any incident in which any of the following occurs, if the incident may have resulted from criminal conduct by an official. So that includes the death of a person, serious injury of a person, discharge of a firearm at a person, or sexual assault of a person as reported by the person. And they stress that the unit is independent of any police service and operates at arm's length from the Ministry of the Attorney General. So that's certainly the way it should be. It should be fully independent, and it should not be staffed by police officers. There's a long-standing axiom in law, dates all the way back to the ancient Romans, and therefore is often expressed in the original Latin, which is Nemo Iudex Causa Sua. Literally translated to English means no man is the judge of his own cause. Uh, extrapolating that to police, n no police officer should investigate another police officer in my view, because uh, the general, the thin blue line concept, it really applies across all police forces. So having London police investigate Waterloo Regional Police, for example, isn't going to make a difference because they're still all members of the same club or guild or profession. They're, they're all part of that brotherhood of police. So it, it's extremely problematic to have police investigating police. Now let's take a look at the official statistics that the SI, SIU gives for their membership. Now again, I can only go off of what the SIU says and assume that this is all accurate. So the lead investigators, this is who's doing the investigation and making the recommendations to the director. So the SIU has a complement of 15 lead investigators who are stationed at their main office, and they're the ones who are responsible for interviewing witnesses, developing and executing the investigative plan. So it says, of the 13 lead investigators currently employed by the SIU, with two vacant spots, 12 have never worked as police officers in Ontario. Rather, their backgrounds include work with such organizations as, we have them listed here, the College of Physicians and Surgeons, Ontario Ministry of Labor, Canada Post, Alcohol and Gaming Commission, Ministry of the Attorney General, University Campus Security, and Canadian Immigration. Then they have as required inv investigators, they have a roster of 24 as required investigators who are based throughout the province and they call upon them when they need them. Now if we go to the bottom here by the numbers here, so they say of the 13 lead investigators, none have policing experience experience in Ontario, but of the 24 as required investigators, they have four civilian backgrounds and 20 come to the unit with a police background. So in my view, the as required investigators is highly, highly problematic because this is classic police investigating the police when 20 out of the 24 are former police officers. Now of the 13 investigators of the full-time investigators, apparently one of them is a former RCMP officer, one of them is a former police officer from another jurisdiction. So again, that smacks of police investigating the police. And moreover, the other civilian members, they're all from government agencies, and they're all kind of quasi-police in my view. I find this highly problematic. In my view, it would be much more effective and give people more trust in the unit if they had truly civilian investigators. People who'd never been employed by the government before, who applied, received investigative training from the SIU itself, not from a previous background, and then 
work their way up through a, a system, an enclosed system that's only the SIU. Although of the permanent investigators, at first blush, most of them aren't actual police officers. They're not members of the Brotherhood, so-called. Uh, that's what I would call it, because it really is strong. The bond between police officers, it's like military. They, they go into dangerous situations. They put their lives at risk for each other. It's a much stronger bond than between members of other professions. So at first blush of the permanent investigators, they're not members of that, but I still have concerns over the partiality or impartiality of these people. And I think this is borne out by the fact that the SIU almost never ever lays charges against police officers and specifically they don't lay charges against police officers in scenarios where in my view a civilian would 100 percent be charged now i don't say this as a criticism of police or because i'm anti-police in any way i'm very pro-police and i think police should be given a lot of leeway and in fact i don't really have a big problem with police being given the benefit of a doubt the problem i do have is with the unequal application of the law. I would be much more happy if civilians, especially civilians who use firearms in self-defense, were given the same benefit of a doubt that police seem to be given when they discharge their firearms. I, I think that the, the problem here is they may be operating in a completely fair manner, but you need not just actual operating in a fair and unbiased manner, you need the appearance of operating in a fair and unbiased manner. And in my view, the appearance is undermined by the m manner in which they fill their staffing positions. There should be no police officers at, at all involved in their unit, in my view. This video, of course, is not legal advice. If you need legal advice, contact a lawyer. You can call another lawyer or myself. My 1855 number and website are listed below. And again, if you have any sh show topics you'd like to see me cover, please send an email to the email address listed or leave a comment in the comment section. I'll do my best to get to that. And uh, if you found this video at all interesting, helpful, or informative, please consider liking, sharing, subscribing, and following us on social media. And please be sure to subscribe on either Rumble or Odyssey if you're currently a YouTube subscriber, given YouTube's recent pronouncements that they're going to be banning channels that spread any, quote, anti-vaccination propaganda, unquote. I don't think that my channel would fall under that because I don't talk about the vaccines themselves. I talk about the legal implications of certain vaccine mandates or laws, but one never knows with YouTube. So uh, I, I encourage you to subscribe in multiple locations and look, look forward to doing another video for you soon.